All right, so guys, Velma. Velma is not only so bad that it united the entire internet, Velma has actually been proven to be so bad that it's spawning conspiracy theories from both sides of the aisle. Uh, this one right here, this is from Forbes, from Paul Tassi. It says, Velma is so bad it spawned PSYOP conspiracy theories. <laughs> the idea here is that it was created by Mindy Kaling to, uh, to in, like, instigate right-wing commentators to, like, boost its SEO, its, its search engine optimization. Oh, um, look at you. Which is, like, completely plausible. It's just really, really ghoulish and stupid. Wait, wait. Okay, does this mean that she is using the bad press to benefit herself the show or, I guess. or is she using the show to benefit people on youtube like us well, and she's actually on our side the, it's the controlled that would be, opposition that would be a funnier one that she's actually like her favorite channels are like a bunch of like right-wing youtubers and she can't tell anyone in hollywood like i'm picturing her <laughs> she's, she's just in the news for saying that she doesn't like well th culture, this is right? what well, this tweet says make, mindy kaling right, is both a transphobe like and said that you couldn't make the office today because of cancel culture mm -hmm. she is a fellow reactionary yeah. she deliberately made velma suck so that culture war youtubers can make a million videos about it to boost its seo somebody needs to make like a photoshop of like the quartering and her like behind in an alley shaking hands like in, in like a dark alley or like any of the right-wing youtubers like her and like a like culture war youtubers like she's like secretly handing them like this is what we're gonna <laughs> this is what we're gonna do so you guys are gonna have all this stuff to talk about she sold her soul to the anti-woke yes youtube sphere <laughs> dude she she united the entire internet my, my favorite meme was uh it was this one right here <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes that is exactly what happened Maybe so i want to i, I want to slightly break down the the mechanics of seo quickly just so we can understand this claim so she's saying that she made it so bad so that people make content which will lead to redirects which in turn creates seo yeah that people would talk about it that much therefore it boosts the visibility of the show okay so here's the thing here's the thing so it's the amount of redirects using the key terms velma and whatever that's what eventually boosts the seo yeah hypothetically Yep. Hypothetically, if you do a good job and people are posting positive things about you at an equal rate, that would also boost your SEO. Yeah, but that's much, that's much harder to do. I've like, only seen that happen for Wednesday yeah. in the past year, I that, think. That's very hard to do. Actually, I would say like shows like um, Reacher got fair, like far more press than it normally would mm. because of how much people actually like the show. But that's because right-wing people like the show. What's funny to me about this is that even the SJWs got mad at Mindy yeah, Kaling. They too. Firstly, they were pointing out that in... <laughs> well, one, one tweet said, Mindy Kaling is so sick. And then they added all of these images from Sex Lives of College Girls where these non-white female characters have romantic subplots with only white men yeah like they they only have white love interests yeah. ever in shows that mindy kaling makes and uh, does that have something to do with like the way that norville was who? treated in yeah. velma like i have no idea or the way that velma regards fred in in the show yeah. it's it's very weird it's very uh well, she was psychologically she was attracted Telling. to Fel. She was attracted to Fred. Like, I got that Seemingly. impression that like when she when she fell down the stairs at the police station, she yeah. looked at Fred with kind of dreamy eyes, and and he was of course. They also the got mad because mm. she is trivializing police brutality. Yeah, so that's what I said. It's when said, we did uh, this initial review, when we did the initial review, I got messages from people on both sides of the aisle. All the right wing people just thought it was awfully written, and then I got some friends of mine that are like leftists that are right. like, it was trivializing police brutality from the way from them pulling the gun on, yes. on her in the police station someone said bro no way the new velma show has an interracial lesbian couple who are both cops that shoot an unarmed teen in the first episode for laughs lmao who is this for it's not for anyone i'm They're asking the same thing because like all of the sjw's that this would supposedly be targeted for dislike it for their own yeah. reasons there's another uh joke that velma makes about uh how comedians can't tell jokes anymore yeah. ever since hashtag me too i spit truth without a filter someone and said like <laughs> this this goes against everything i previously understood about velma like i don't yeah. know if i like her anymore just because she would say something like this that's such a funny phrase that 
comedians can't be edgy anymore. And then she just says the most accepted possible view. Yeah. Well, ever I mean, it's like she, huh, white guys am i right like, yeah but she, she, she's not, like, this thing, she makes jokes about everyone it's just all the jokes are bad like the smart people aren't saying that you're you're being a leftist or or, or right wing they're saying you're just horrible at humor you mm-hmm. just don't know how to tell jokes and you're full of spite anger and vitriol which is weird because she has the type of career in hollywood that a lot of people are envious of yeah. that they they would kill to have thank you and she's been uh, kind of unfairly boosted up yeah. uh, to that point, but she just can't help but reveal how how jealous she is of people with immutable traits she doesn't have, and she uses this like big budget vanity project to express her anger at them. Yeah, this that was this article it says the internet turns against Mindy Kaling over a bad uh, Me Too joke. No, one sector of the internet turned against Mindy Kaling, the side that normally would have supported her through all of the horrible humor. And that's the thing. It's got nothing to do. I'm not offended by the, the Me Too joke. I'm not offended by the jokes about Fred. I'm not offended by the police brutality jokes. I'm offended by how badly it was done and how you can tell jokes from a place of desi- of desiring to be humorous and making people laugh. This wasn't designed to make people laugh. It was designed to make people shocked. Well, some and people brought up that they think this is a result of divorcing the cartoonists from yeah. the story writers instead of having a storyboard room where the people who animate know how to deliver the Lines. gags of the show through their art. And that might come to like, like they get mad when they hire like regular actors for voice acting roles, especially like, it was like when Beyonce got hired for The Lion King and a lot of, you know, people that are singers that get hired or, or Taylor Swift getting roles in Cats, mm-hmm. remember? Mm-hmm. Cats! Uh, do you like, <laughs> Never forget James Corden yeah. walking into the middle of a freeway dressed as a cat. Yes. <laughs> I don't think this is going to end up working for them because I think that the outrage, this this is, uh, d- if it was designed to boost SEO f- uh, via the YouTubers, the YouTubers will w- win in the end because the morbid curiosity got people to tune in for the premiere. I don't think it holds on to the viewers from here on out. I think the uh, audience starts to drop off, but the viewers for the people who are getting tons of hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, those people are going to continue to get their views because it's the same way I look at podcasting for wrestling. I don't watch wrestling anymore, but I listen to wrestling podcasts because I like to hear them dissect the industry. I'm not imagine a lot of people aren't going to keep tuning into this to keep watching the show. They're going to keep watching the YouTubers to hear what they have to say about it. And also, I think, I think like it's a failed bet. Because, so betting on it being so bad, people are going to watch yeah. it. They're going to clip the bad parts and yeah. it's going to be everywhere. And, and people are going to know that, that those are the shite parts and no one's gonna watch the actual thing looking it's gonna for be it. even more infamous than she hulk was mm. uh, no nope. I, I mean i'm sure there are a lot of people that finished she hulk all the way through that season yeah i don't know about season two but this, this seems like it won't even retain its original intended audience um miss marvel won what was the highest rated rotten tomatoes product this year Really? Uh, from really? audience or from critics? From, the, from, critics, from critics, not audience? From critics, yeah. It was uh, just above, um, what was it? It was like another, it was like, it wasn't She-Hulk, but it was, uh, I think Moon Knight was number five, but I think She-Hulk was in the top three. Is bad That's humor insane. worse than snark? See, I, I found that hard to believe. I thought I thought She-Hulk, She-Hulk got it pretty bad from a lot of critics too, the same way. I might be misremembering. Right. I just know that Miss Marvel won the top, has the highest rated, um, the highest rated, Critic score on Rotten Tomatoes is here. What was that question again? Is bad humor worse than snark? Snark is worse to me. For me, snark is the B- worst. Bad uh. humor, you can swing and miss, and I can still appreciate the effort. Snark is like, it's a defense mechanism that I don't have to try, so I'm pretentious and snarky from the get-go as a way of defending myself against the fact that I'm not actually funny. And usually, it takes form in bad humor. Yes. Snark Absolutely. Does. Well, that's what the show was. The show was the embodiment of bad humor through snark, because they view bad, they, they view snarkiness as deep and intellectual like i know enough about the human condition to be negative about it therefore i am i know more than you do you think that studios learn a lesson no, this year no. that because they have three failures in a row they have this they have she hulk and they have um uh don't worry darling which are all don't worry same. darling is a bigger failure than the other two True. the other ones okay like to the to the, some dude in a suit who doesn't understand what's going on in the world all he sees is a bunch of people talking about it online yeah 
right? Like True. he doesn't see that they're, that most of the reaction is negative. They're looking, it's like when you look at your impressions, like your impressions on social media, how much reach did this post get? Do you care whether right, that reach but, is bad or good most of the time? Most people don't. They just want it to get reach. Right, but don't, don't they at a point say, okay, the Kathleen Kennedy thing yeah. did not work out. Yeah. So everybody that's mirroring that, yeah. do they stop doing that where it's like, we're going to, we're not, not only are we going to make this, we're going to demand in a sense that you like it. And if you don't, we're going to spit yeah. in your face. And I just don't see that working long term. I like, also it, think that's obviously my, it's not going to work long term, but I don't yeah. see them even like well, look what it did to Star Wars. and pretending. Huh? Look what it did to Star Wars. Exactly. It, del- it, it eliminated movie profitability for yes. it re- removed the movie model and turned them entirely into a streaming platform right. for, for their project. Right. And now they have like, in my opinion, the best Star Wars that they, has been made since the Disney takeover, which is Andor, yeah. which has none of this. Yeah. None of it. But too little too late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is the other thing. But Are do they we... take that lesson? That's my question. Do, does do does any studio say like this really doesn't work? I really like, think so. But yeah. also, are, are we just in an era that we're past season 2 television? You mm-hmm. don't need season 2 anymore. Most of these shows are limit are done as limited runs anyways. Yeah. The yeah. Last of Us episode was an hour and a half long. That's basically a movie. Yeah. Like, think about what they're getting, like, think about what they have to get paid now. Like, a guy, an actor comes out to do a movie, right? And it's a, the movie ends up being two to two and a half hours most of the time. And they're filming, how many scenes are they filming to do an hour and a half for every episode of Andor and making less money than they would make to do on a movie? Mm-hmm. That's for way more time. Yeah. Like, we're just in an age where they, they just do their season one of this. And then because it's owned by Warner Brothers, who owns tons of other properties, you just, you, they're locusts, like the, like the aliens in Independence Day. They just move on to the next property. They go and to the next Yeah, thing. they just move on to the next one. They don't need to. They already, they, did you guys see Santa Inc.? No, no. Santa Inc. doesn't even ruin a property. It just ruins an Amer- like a, not an American, but like a, a a huge part of culture, which is Santa Claus. It goes, it ruins oh, it with its Seth Rogen. Yeah, with Seth Rogen. It goes, it ruins it with its snarky cynicism, and then you move on to the next holiday that they'll ruin next year. Yeah. Like it's like they don't need to worry about longevity because they yeah. buy up all these properties. Yeah. Wesley, to your point, I've been kind of saying for a while that. Uh, pro- uh, rampant progressivism or wokeness is on its death now yeah. because ultimately capitalism is about growth and it's about shareholder value and you know they can say all they want that they're doing representation they're doing dex and they're doing y but th- there's simply not money coming into no. things I, I i don't know that it's on its death now i your point is valid i think it's going to cause a further bifurcation in the market that there's going to be this that's funded by like insane billionaires. And then there's going to continue to be like small stuff like uh, that, you know, whatever I'm um, the daily wire, things like that for lack of better example that are doing those things better anyway, like not always, but they're trying to do the things that these shows are claiming to do. Right. Like, um, I mean, like the daily wire has three movie, three movies that have female leads. Right. Yeah. Like, and it's better. It's it's a better execution of that idea than anything like this. It's not better than Hollywood. It's not production wise, but that's going to take time. Yeah, it is, and that's fine. And in, you know? uh, they'll have most to people are willing up. to deal with that. They're willing to deal with that with the thing that I make. Where yeah. they're like, oh, I understand that you don't have this much money to make a thing. So, but I'll watch it. You know? Yeah. So I I love, I love to pull up guys uh, to ask: Should we keep reviewing uh, Velma? Should we keep reviewing The Last of Us? Or should we watch both and review those? Click, 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 what, click, click. What, what, what should we should we wait or should we we call it now, Mary? The thing is, uh, there's more anger at Velma, of course, than at The Last of Us. So I feel like automatically the hate watching type of reviews get more I know, attention. And that's just how the do, internet works. I'd like to do both if for no other reason than I don't want to be somebody who just has to be angry all the time. Like it, if I had to choose between the two, it certainly would be easier to just be mad at Velma all the time, but it actually takes some work to actually dissect what's going on in the last of it, it doesn't personally make me mad to watch Velma. It's it's just what we would have expected, right? Yeah. Like, there is no surprise in what we're seeing. I can't predict how it's going to end. I think the only answer is to, like, go to some extraordinary level of absurdity where, yeah. like, I don't know, Scooby shows up somehow. Yeah. Like, it's inevitable oh, yeah, that I, they're going to have Scooby, Scooby end show up, at the, up at the end somehow. Yeah. Like, one person said that she should, like, get pregnant 
and then give birth to Scooby <laughs> because and then it would be like de- to be continued and then there would be no more episodes ever mm. and that's just how it ends that's an amazing that's an amazing idea <laughs> uh, one thing I, I hope that everyone can be on the same page about is that it's just weird to age down these characters and then make them do adult things and be literally like naked this, on this, camera right in the away show. yeah like uh, one of the tweets even said like you age down the characters and then have them moan while kissing. <laughs> like that's that's actually questionable. This was but nobody's the, talking about it. Yeah. This was the notice here from Screen Rant that says Velma the series may have already been renewed for a second season at HBO Max as listings for new episodes of the Scooby spin-off show have appeared uh, on the Entertainment Identification Registry. Basically, like when a show has been renewed for multiple seasons, it'll like list the ones that have been available and then it will list out to the ones that have been approved to start and it will just say like episode one that you know x1 and then no information is provided just that that it's going to be there because they register the content i mean everything else mindy kaling has ever made is astroturfed af like she doesn't have a real organic whose daughter is she because like like, what is her nepotism connection i'm dying to know because everything she makes sucks yeah she she i don't even know how she's gotten to the point that she has in her career because everything she has made has zero organic hype around it. Yeah. The do- the it's office was cool, vanity projects. but I'm not oh. even joking. Or as the kids say, Cap'n. Um, I don't. I'm not. I don't even remember her role in the show. I don't remember what. What did she do on the the Office? The uh, apparent. By the way, apparently the guy who's doing the show running for Velma was a was a major was a writer for the Office and a major writer for. Um, What's it called? Uh, the Daily Show mm. for years What's back his in name? the day. Oof. Chris Gandy or Grandy or something like that. Back at like we're talking early okay. days though, like ninety eight to two thousand one. Okay, dude, I can't take. As for her character on The Office, I think it was well liked and it was popular. At I don't the remember. Time, but I'm not being she, ironic. It, it's only likable. Like her character was only likable because somebody else wrote it and came up with it. <laughs> and like Brett said, she was standing on the shoulders of giants when she was on that show. And that's what pe- most people know her from now. Well, still. I, mean, I think of it more as like she's on. You're on the shoulders of giants because Scooby Doo is a massive property that has years of fan trust built up through fantastic media that's been already done, and you're just co-opting it and turning it into this garbage. That's even more standing on the shoulders of giants. You don't have the guts, let's say, to take these characters, name them something else. And I mean, what does it really have to do with solving uh, a unique mystery to the Scooby-Doo world right now? Anyways, nothing. There's no Scooby in it. So they could have easily just made this with different character names and called it something else. Mystery High School or something stupid like that and made the same exact show and it would have been just as bad but less offensive. Or they could have made a parody show yeah. a parodying the yeah. franchise, but <laughs> instead they had to attempt to make an addition to the canon of the franchise that everyone hates. Here's another thing that needs to stop immediately. That needs to stop immediately. This, a show comes out, public reception, we hate it. Well, it's been renewed, so what can I say? Like, can you guys wait till the public tells you that we want it back or not? But then every time there's a show like 1899 that people really like, that has a cult fan base, it gets discontinued. That's what I'm saying. Like, can you guys wait until the public reception comes and then make your choice? It's like, oh, well, the the 18th Avatar movie is greenlit. <laughs> well, Who's going to care? At least with that, you can defend it by saying, like, it is making over a billion dollars yeah. now. What is that at? Like, over 1.5 But is it money like printing? Right That's. Now, yeah. I mean, it, it's sus, but the money is there. Yeah. It, but for Velma, I have no idea. It feels like... A season two for Velma was guaranteed from the very start because they feel like they're making a point. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.